Well, good morning. We're doing something a little bit different today. We're working on a, a 389, a Peterbilt glider. If you don't know what a glider is, uh, this is a 2014 glider. It is a truck, bah, they used to do this, um, but they, they stopped making gliders. But what when you order a glider, you would get a truck that's just a shell. So you'd get like a brand new truck and you could put the engine you wanted in it so that uh, you would you would have all the components of a new truck, but maybe you had a, your own your own engine or you had a different engine you wanted to put in it than they offered. You could make that happen with a glider package. Really cool thing to have. And this one has a Series 60 Detroit in it. It's a pre-2000, really good engine. Um, and so it's a 2014, you got a 2014 model, but you got an old engine in it that you can uh, take care of. So while one thing is you can run paper logs with it, which is appealing to a lot of people, but the most important thing I think is that you don't have the depth system. You don't have all these things that start to add up. So you can keep this truck for a long, long time and they, and they hold their value. So like this truck, you could probably buy this truck um, a couple years ago for around seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars uh, now you're looking at over a hundred thousand dollars for almost any of these gliders that you see out here even this one that's it's a pretty nice truck right it's a pretty nice truck and it, but he does he's not like polishing it and cleaning it up he kind of doesn't give it a bath as, as often as maybe it should have but he keeps it pretty well maintained the best thing about the glider though is if you're thinking about buying a truck and you can get your hands on a, a good deal on a glider i think it's a good opportunity for you because a dev system I, i've guy after guy after guy i'm not even kidding is spending twenty thousand dollars on their dev system you know the filters start to get clogged up stuff starts to go wrong they end up getting stuck in a shop somewhere and uh i know one guy just spent twenty seven thousand dollars and spent three months in iowa okay with his freightliner three months out uh because he also had a little bit of a warranty package but they only paid twelve thousand five hundred on that warranty so three months out you got the bills piling up and then his bill came to twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars to fix it uh that makes this uh really appealing because if you want to go ahead and get this engine rebuilt you could one you could do it yourself this is the type of motor you would want to work on and do it yourself if you wanted to get into something like that. Whereas you're going to need a lot of a more technical stuff with these newer motors. This is the kind of motor I would say, go for it. The rebuild kit is really reasonable. So you can probably buy a new head and uh, an in-frame kit. You could probably get that for around 80, 8,500 bucks, something around 8,000, $9,000. And then you could take it to a shop that's not a dealer okay you could take it to a shop and you could probably find someone who can uh get it rebuilt for you for another uh, let's say four thousand dollars so you maybe have twelve fourteen thousand dollars in doing this engine if you shop around you find someone who really knows what they're doing uh whereas those other motors those those big boys those technical ones you're gonna be spending uh, i've seen people spend thirty five forty thousand dollars for the engine you think about 20 something thousand dollars in the def system. Oh my goodness, you are just broke. I always like to try to give tips as though you have no idea what you're doing. Kind of like I had no idea what I was doing when I kind of started out on things and I've kind of learned along the way. Uh, one of the things, when you change oil, you really want this truck to be kind of warmed up. So we're gonna start this truck up, get it warmed up because you want all the oil nice and loose and it kind of flows right out. So. Uh, if you're changing your own oil, remember, get the engine warmed up, and that way you can get all that oil out of there when you go to change it. So that's what we're going to do right now. Hear that? That Detroit makes such a pretty sound, don't it? Here's an important tip. I know a lot of people are, you know, you take your, your truck in to get grease and oiled somewhere else. It's so important that after a grease job after you get the oil changed name brand doesn't matter crawl underneath it make sure your u-joints on your drive line are all greased uh make sure the important things are definitely greased because you could have yourself a, a bad failure 
these really dry up um, after miles and miles and miles. And this truck was going to a name brand place, a nationwide place, and going to the same place, one local here. And they did not grease the drive shaft for change after change after change. And finally, it broke loose. And so they ended up paying uh, a lot of money, but it could have killed somebody. It, you know, it could have caused a major accident, it got close to causing one. So crawl under your truck, make sure this is happening. Unfortunately, in a lot of these places, they don't put their best people on the grease job. And then they, there's, there's certain grease circs that are just not fun to find or get to, and they might skip those. Make sure you check. Make sure you check your drive line for sure. One thing I like about older trucks is it feels like they almost have uh, a soul. I don't know. Or like they have an attitude sometimes where they just kind of speak to you in different ways. Like, hey, I'm going to, you haven't taken care of me. Like this one, I think this guy j listens to Neil Diamond all day and doesn't take good care of it. I don't think she likes it that much. So she knows when to act up and it's DOT week the blitz thing so uh, of course that's when it's going to give you all your issues let me show you <laughs> it just decided to go out so we have to fix that that's why you don't treat her bad. Look at her. She doesn't want to listen to Neil Diamond all day. Maybe a little Neil Diamond, but not all day. Okay, we're going to work on these brakes. And if you can tell, these are slack adjusters. They're absolutely disgusting. And that's one of the things I hate about working on other people's equipment is they are so horrible. Look at this. This is disgusting. Anyways, uh, I see this all the time. So, <sighs> my my stuff i just i have to keep it clean but this is the kind of stuff you run into oh man it's just like caked on there anyways um there's a bolt right on the back of the slack adjuster and what you do is you turn that left until you loosen your brakes all the way up and that way you can get the uh the drum off and you can get these brakes off and you want to loosen it up as much as you can uh so that you can uh you'll release the brakes and then loosen them. So if, you, if you're having trouble turning that thing, uh, one, there could be uh, some you have to pull out. So there's a little pin in there. You have to clean yours off. Yours are as nasty as this to see it. Pull the bolt out a little bit and then you can turn it. Uh, you just have to make sure you got the, the right setup. If you can't crank on, if you can't turn it, don't uh, crank on it till you break something off. I mean, that would be really dumb. Uh, and then you'll be getting new slack adjusters. Uh, but for right now, uh, this is pretty simple. Turn it to the left, get it real loose. Make sure your brakes are released when you do it because uh, otherwise it's going to be tied against the drum and then you won't be able to turn it. So if you can't turn it with the brakes released, then check to see if you got to do something with this bolt, uh, depending on what slack adjusters. My, my 362 has three different types of freaking slack adjusters. So uh, don't be... Uh, don't be surprised if you have multiple different types of slack adjusters as well, uh, depending on the truck you have, but get this loose and then you can start. All right, now we're getting ready to take the Neil Diamond tires off. You need one of these. if You really want to get it done, but take all them lugs out. If you can't do that, you probably shouldn't do this, but pretty simple. All right, now you're at this point, you gotta take that drum off to get your brakes. And she don't always want to come off real easy. She just needs a little love tap. Sometimes she needs more than just a little love tap. There. Now, she'll break loose and slide off. I need two hands. Check your drum. Make sure the inside's not all screwed up. Eat up your brakes. About every two Changes, I think is the going right. Something right there. Change those out. Those things cost 160 bucks a piece. So, uh, and there's your brakes. So what we do, 
pull this spring off, the spring off, and the whole thing comes off. So I got a little tool thrown over here. Got this little tool. This little tool comes in handy. You can buy them on Amazon. Just a big brake tool. Uh, makes taking these springs off a lot easier. So stick it under here, grab something, and lift up. Spring comes off. Ding. This one to the bottom side. And one handed. That's how easy that is. Okay. Then pull off this whole thing. And you take those back in, you get a core charge. I think it's like 50 bucks. So, if you're doing it the first time, sometimes you need to take one off, take them in, make sure you get the right pads. So, that's how easy that is. So simple, so simple. If these are all good, cleaned up, S cam, make sure that's cleaned up. I just like to clean it up a little bit. And then we can put the new ones on. Here's the new brake pads. They come with a kit. These, they slide right in. See what the, the hole lines up with that spring that keeps them in. Just pop that in. Pop the spring out that side, pop the spring out that side. It's ready to go. You got a big, big spring. All right, come on. It's all together. Spring. There. I'm trying to look at the camera here. Gotta match these up. Now the guy who owns this truck has a really bad hernia. That's why he cannot do this. If you do have some type of physical problem, it's best not to try this. Um, then you take this, put it back over the top of here on that S cam, line these up on each side, and then these these curves right here go around here. If they we'll go ahead and do that. Quick quick tip, quick tip. If you put this thing on, you see how these are lined up on that S cam, you kind of put the top on, then you press down and Put the bottom on and you line them up on this pin here if this is out and it say it's pushed forward this way all you need to do is turn your slack adjuster some more loosen them up a little bit more most likely so that it fits in this pocket it's a lot easier that way so when that thing turns it uh, compresses it or turns it pushes the brakes against the drum so one of the easy tips to do is, instead of fighting it, all you gotta do is get back under there, turn that slack adjuster screw that I showed you earlier. Now, there's a ton of videos on how to do brakes, so I'm not gonna try to teach you every little thing. I just wanna make the point that this is really simple to do. Uh, very, You don't have to have a lot of expertise. It's not an in-frame, it's nothing complicated. This is simple to do. So my basic math is, if you get a, a quote and you know the only place you got to do the brakes, you don't have some guy locally that'll say, hey, I'll do it for 50 bucks, uh, an axle or something crazy, you know, some really good deal. Um, if you're thinking about spending a couple, you know, you spend like this guy was thinking about spending $2,000. If you're thinking about spending that, just try to calculate how much money do you make a day? If you make less profit in a day for an easy job like this, it makes every bit of sense for you to just get under here and do it yourself. So why truck for two days just to make enough profit to pay for the brakes if you can work just one day and then you get to keep the next day a uh, profit for yourself? When the rates are as low as they are, this is the time where you got to start really learning how to do some of the stuff yourself. That's my tip. I don't know. It works. 
you can see that's I got that on the lip but it's not all the way snapped in there make sure all your springs are snapped in there so I just take a pair of pliers and kind of and then it's snapped into place easy peasy all right drums on wheels back on and then torque these down to spec and uh adjust your slack adjusters release the brakes tighten them up and then back off once you get it once you tighten it that, that nut that i first showed you once you tighten it till it don't tighten no more then back it off half a turn whatever you want to do some people do quarter turn some people do three quarter turn or most people do half a turn it seems like so they're new pads so tighten back off it's that simple i can't do it right now because i'm waiting for a part to come in the spring spring valve quick release valve whatever that is so i got no air pressure so i can't uh i can't properly show you yet okay we got the uh quick release valve in and i just want to tell you a little something uh, about when you replace these things uh, and, the, and the type of parts you get. Uh, the first one we put, this is the second one we put in. We put the first one in and it was a PAI uh, release. And I've got to tell you, uh, we put it in and uh, you'd, you'd uh, set the brakes. So you, you release the brakes, it works fine. But then when you go to set the brakes, it would be a slow whoosh. Okay, so it was like five seconds. And then you're like, oh, trying to diagnose maybe whatever is causing that has something to do with why it failed in the first place. But, um, or it's uh, a bad valve. And the place you buy it from, uh, the, where he, uh, this guy got his, it, they didn't want to take it back and they don't want to give you your money back. And they go through a whole warranty process over like a $40 part. So went through the, control valve spent a lot of time racking my brain on it finally just bought another one put it on works perfect you, you set the brakes beautiful so be careful on the parts you buy you get a brand new part you put it in and it doesn't work uh, sometimes you can spend way too much time trying to diagnose other things when you just you bought something brand new and it still is a piece of junk uh that, that doesn't work from day one well we finished up with the neil diamond truck for now uh at least for this trip uh it ended up being a lot of stuff and oh my goodness how how it starts to add up when you're out on the road a lot uh but we got two new steer tires hit a pie hole on this thing it was so bad it like broke the belt or bent the belt so bad and warped it that it was vibrating real bad not even sure how he made it home busted out a turn signal light i mean it really must have jolted the truck busted some brackets on these uh on these on these trim pieces these skirts and uh so i had to weld some new brackets together because they're made of aluminum and uh got the brakes done got everything done he's ready to go back to work look, look at this trailer looks like it's Looks like it's a little bit older than a year and a half old, right? It's a brand new trailer, Rittenauer, uh, which most people can't even spell Rittenauer if you look on Marketplace. But I guess if you can't pronounce it, no, not a big deal. We got some new Marathon Goodyear tires. Uh, these were only 390 bucks a piece. We put them on ourselves. Real easy to do. Simple. Bang, bang, boom. But the steel ones, they're a little bit, the steel, the inner inner rims are a little bit more challenging anyways we're finished up with it and uh we'll be back on the road hope any of that helps you if you're in the business or if you're doing that uh otherwise if you just watched it for entertainment hey i love seeing you if uh if you have any comments please leave them down below hit the like and subscribe button i gotta go